Okay, so as you can see, I'm at the point where I'm ready to start clenching up. I've actually applied, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't use a finishing rasp because I don't see the value of them, but I've, uh, I've got the foot to as decent a finish as I'm going to get before actually clenching up, so I don't need to, essentially, I don't need to take any more hoof away from the foot once I've started to clench up. I'm literally just going to be pulling the clenches over, rasping them back, pushing them in with the clenching tongs, and then smoothing them over. So if you come just around here so you can just see this side of what I'm doing. But just bring the camera so it's looking this direction, that's it. Basically, this is the most important part for me, is getting the nails over at the right angle. Because if you don't, if you leave them up too high, pointing upwards more so, when you pull them down, you tend to roll the clench over rather than fold it back in flat. And if you pull them down too low on that first pull over, you actually will end up slipping off with your clenching tongs because they're already pointing downwards and you need them to be, sorry, you need them to be sticking out at almost exactly 45 degrees from the hoof before they'll, you can get an effective clench. Now, as you can see, if you come around this side, you can see I've only used a rasp and I've only literally only taken away what was, what was sort of bunched up under the clench itself. I've not left a mark hardly. No gouging or or no grooving with the rasp, no no undercutting required really. Um, and basically at this point there's then, I find it easiest to use two stages. I'll get pretty high up in the teeth, and I'll squeeze at the top of the clenching tongues to get about halfway over, and then I'll readjust the tongues so that I'm using a slightly lower teeth down the, the jaw, and pull the tongues up towards me like that. Same with this one, pull it half over, pull towards me, half over, pull towards me. And then they're almost completely flush into the foot now. I've literally only got to give a couple of swipes with the rasp and that's it. Yeah, I've caught the wall a little bit with my clenching tongs here, but that's a risky take when you're clenching up lower nails, unfortunately, um, when you're using clenching tongs. And same with this side. Half over, half over, half over, that's quite a little bit too high. There. And if you look from this angle, you'll see that I'm actually holding the rasp at the angle of the hoof. I'm not coming at it like this, I'm not coming at it any other angle aside from the angle of the hoof. So I'm only touching the shoe and the clenches. No. <laughs> We've got an itchy horse here. Get off. So. And the same then when it undercut and literally holding it flat against the hoof. So I'm only taking from directly under that clench, see nothing else has gone. Sanding sponge. Literally no more rasping needs to be done as far as I'm concerned. I've done all the rasping in my trim. I don't need to polish the hoof because I'm not gonna get unless I buy a finishing rasp. Hey, I'm not gonna get I'm never again gonna get as decent a finish as I got with my original trimming rasp. So I don't see the point in using your clenching rasp for finishing. Okay, that'll do.